Hey guys, Corey Hutton from Free Play Arcade here. We are at the site of what's going to become Free Play Fort Worth. But this is not built out yet. This is as we receive the building after we sign the lease. Uh, we're about to start work, but before that, we wanted to give you a quick preview of what's to come. We're gonna do a quick walkthrough so that you can see later kind of where we came from. This is a historic building. It's the old Lions Club. It was formerly known as the Fairmont Music Hall. And uh, we're gonna turn it into an awesome arcade. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, guys, we're in here doing preliminary work. We, of course, found some cool old stuff like this beer sign. Free play is coming to Fort Worth. Let's look around, let's check it out. So as you walk in, this is the old dining room. Uh, for a split second, this was supposed to be a fine dining venue. Whatever that means, is a performance arts with fine dining. Uh, I don't think it ever quite connected and uh, we ended up with the space. So this was their old dining area. I'm gonna give you all the full, complete access tour. And again, we're all in here working right now. This is day one. So in here, this is what I guess was their manager's office. Uh, one thing you'll notice if you're used to uh, going through buildings and everything, this is a very important fire suppression system. This is our fire sprinkler. This is not really where you're supposed to build an office. Uh, we've talked to the city. We're gonna be able to reconfigure the area, but it was not a great idea originally. Uh, and we're gonna do what we can to fix it. Up here, uh, we've got a permanently installed ladder that goes to kind of like a crow's nest that you can't see anything from or use for storage or anything. Not sure what they were thinking, but uh, we'll see what we can do with it. All right, so next up, you can see they had kind of a cheesy gas fireplace and uh, really quick, I'm gonna say probably some mean things about the former place because uh, there's a lot of weird stuff in here, but I don't mean it personally, guys. So if you happen to own the Fairmont Music Hall, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to rag on you. I'm sorry I went out of business, uh, but I am excited to open up a free play here. So yeah, you had cheesy gas fireplace. You had this kind of interesting copper-ish bar. And we're gonna bring you all the way back. Uh, and you can see this is dirty. This place has not been cleaned yet, but it will be cleaned. We're gonna run all new beer lines and everything. All right, so we're back here over here by bar two um, that will be going, there will be cool arcade games right here. And then we're walking up to another thing that will be disappearing, the old, uh, the sound producer booth for the venue. And you can kind of see, this is where the sound producer said, you can see what he saw the uh, from the stage. It was, this venue might've been a little too small. Like uh, I'm not in that business, but it sure seems like to have this much square footage dedicated to your sound engineer and have the performance right there, you've only got enough room for 40 or 50, maybe in a really tight fit, 100 people between there. And, I haven't done live music and we do love live music, uh, it's gonna be hard to make any money. Uh, so I can kind of see perhaps, and you'll see in here tons of old furniture that you'll never see at free play. Um, the, the truth is most of the furniture here was, in, was probably originally decent furniture, but by the time we got to it, it's pretty much lived its life. Uh, we're gonna walk over to something, I guess, this was the VIP section of the small venue. You'll see there's like a little corner with this huge couch and some other, I mean, you've got a little step up. It's a great view of the stage, but honestly, this place is so small. Every place you were standing gave you a great view of the stage. And if you're wondering, this will also be going. Um, one of the things is a, a step up into an arcade would, would kind of limit the people that can come to the arc to play these games anyways. So uh, we, we're gonna knock this down, take it back to the floor, fill this whole area up with arcade games. And it, you saw on the front, it was kind of small. That's gonna pretty much re remain a dining area. We're gonna put some games in there, but in here is gonna be the big game room. And we've got about 5,500, 5,200 square feet of total space. Um, so we actually have to make really, really good choices with it to maximize the amount of games we're gonna be able to put in here. And then the biggest question, and it's the most heartbreaking question uh, that will come up and that has to come up, what's gonna happen to the stage? It will be going away. Uh, we do have, of course, we've our own portable stage that we use for live shows that's really awesome and uh, has, we've used it to great success. Unfortunately, this is kind of overkill for what we do. Our two to six shows a year that we do and you know maybe 12 shows max uh, just would not be able to support a stage like this and the square footage that's dedicated to it. So that's a tragedy. In Arlington, we received a lot of flack for changing that from a performance venue to uh, the great arcade that it is now. And most people don't don't give us that flack anymore because it is such an awesome arcade and that's the hope here. Um, but we love live music. It's just a, a fact of the business that it's really hard to operate places like this. Uh, so we're gonna go in. This is definitely something you will not be able to um, see because right next to the stage, they built what 
This is one of the best green rooms I've ever seen. It, it, it's been, we've moved some of the furniture out of it and everything. We've got a nice little roof leak right here coming in. It rained earlier today. Another thing that we're gonna have to fix before we open, um, but they built out this big green room. They've had a little wet bar here. Uh, when we came in, there was various liquor bottles and everything. And let me see if I can add any light, kind of. Uh, so, and then they had a full restroom uh, for the band, which unfortunately our bands, though we try to set them up somewhere nice, uh, we've never been able to give them a green room like this. And unfortunately for everyone, this green room will have to go away. Just, we need this square footage for games. It is the same height as the stage. So both of those will be disappearing. And um, uh, it, it's heartbreaking, but it also means we're gonna be able to have an awesome arcade. Right here we have, for some reason, like a 12, 15 foot tall, very expensive, very insane rolling door. Uh, it'll be staying, but not really useful for us. Uh, and maybe if we get a cut, We'll see if we can figure out how to work it uh, and open it up and show you kind of one of the patios. Uh, looks like we had probably just stage storage back there. And we'll walk down over here so I can show you some other insane stuff. We've got a landing here that looks sturdy and looks like it was built to actually store stuff, but kind of scary. Has a ladder that locks in. We've got the electrical and, and some people have asked why free play is always um, looking for venues that are like former performance arts or like the dry cleaner. And one of the big answers is they always have a ton of power. So as you can see here, we're pretty well set up. Uh, we have enough power in this building uh, for our operations and uh, it's not even gonna be a question. So that's awesome. And then I wanna show you all this really kind of quirky feature. There was another VIP section. This is the second VIP section in this tiny performance arts venue where you could sit right next to the stage. You could look under the performers. They even had a TV in here, I guess, I, to watch something else. I don't really know, um, but it's just, it's full of really interesting, weird stuff that I wouldn't do, but uh, will also be going away. This room will probably become the tech office or something similar. Um, so, and then we've got more furniture. We've got furniture being moved out as I'm talking. Um, a ton of stuff in here uh, that we, we inherited that is, is not gonna work for our business, but it's just, it's a really neat space. And if you look up, you can see some really cool architectural features that we are gonna be able to preserve, that they took a lot of time and effort. It will look totally different um, when you come in here the first time. And we are gonna make a ton of changes, the coloring, everything like that will become more free play E. But we're also gonna do what we can to preserve the things that they got right. And I guess, you know what, we're doing the full tour. We're gonna go check out the restrooms. Now remember, there's no water, so it's, it's probably gonna look kind of yucky, kind of gross. Um, and this hall, this is kind of an interesting hallway. So this is the hallway to get back to the main area, which is, makes sense, I think, both for an arcade and a performing arts venue. So you've got all the performances back there on the stage and your main kind of uh, lounge area up front. So you can go from the lounge to the stage. Um, it's a little awkward, but I think we're gonna be able to make it work. All right, so we're gonna go check out these restrooms. Wait, before we use the restrooms, this is pretty bizarre. They put this huge, I guess it's a freezer. Yeah, it's a huge freezer, um, which uh, signifies at the end they were probably deep frying everything. One thing you might notice, this freezer is taller than the door. Um, so it's gonna be really fun to get out because we don't, we don't have any need. We'll probably have to actually take down this false wall, uh, which might, might be necessary anyways for certain code reasons that I don't wanna get into because I don't wanna get in trouble. Um, but. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot of work. This is their, so this is, if you've ever wondered where your sodas come from in a soda fountain, this would run, and we're probably 40 feet from the bar right now. This would run the soda all the way up and over to the bar, and you'd be drinking this mixed with carbonated water, kind of syrup. Not our style, we like real sugar, glass bottled sodas. All right, so let's see, let's go in here. You know, uh, this is actually gonna be pretty functional. Uh, you'll have to excuse how gross it is. It is half construction site. Uh, they have some fixtures up there that'll be going away, but you've got three urinals, two toilets for the men. That's actually really good. And I, I know it's like, it's probably not something you think about in a lot of places you go to, but a huge decision we have to make in each place is how many bathrooms do we have? What kind of volume can we do in the restroom? And our smallest restroom, uh, actually Denton and Richardson both have the same size restrooms, which if you know anything about both of those locations, that means Richardson's might be a little small, but that was our first one. We built it ourselves. Uh, we, it would have been nice to fit one more toilet or urinal in there, but you know, overall pretty good restroom. We'll change some of the decor, but it'll look good. Uh oh, 
I can't tell if someone just went out or went in to the women's room. So we're gonna check, knock. All right, I think we're good. Somehow, despite this place being out of business for five or six months, the women's restroom smells good and the men smell terrible. What is happening in this world? All right, so this is awesome though. So like uh, this, a concert venue, a performance venue has to have a lot of restrooms because they have to deal with volume really, really fast. Uh, this is really awesome. One, two, three, four, five stalls for the women with an ADA stall at the end. That is awesome. That means no matter how busy we get, we're gonna be able to service the people. Uh, tons of sinks. It's kind of ugly, not our style, um, but we're gonna, we'll redo a lot of it. We'll see what survives. It'll be really fun in the next video uh, once we're done in a few months. And, you know, we were walking through here. We noticed all sorts of weird stuff. So up here, you've got some lights that can, or some switches that control these lights over here. The gross thing is we found a little pole that they were using to kind of scrape instead of reaching up to hit it. Uh, I guess when these venues start to go out of business, they just start doing a lot of interesting weird stuff. But that is it, I think, for the inside of what's to become Free Play Fort Worth. Now here's the coolest thing. There is more patio space at Free Play Fort Worth than there is inside space. So we've got 5,200-ish, 5,500 square feet here in the building. We've got more than 6,000 total patio space, including 3,300 square feet up on the roof, on a rooftop patio. We're gonna go check that out. All right, guys, we're out here at the lower level patio for Free Play Fort Worth. The first patio we're gonna go through, this used to be the backstage for the venue um, so that they could potentially have that huge rolling door that you saw before roll up and you could have a band facing outside and you could have a little crowd watching it, drinking, enjoying themselves on this really pretty oversized patio. Uh, I'll point out a couple of things that we're gonna work on. You can see the Free Play truck right there moving some stuff out, moving some stuff around, getting ready. We're right next to, uh, I think it's pronounced Kanye, not Kanye, it's Kanye Rosso. Uh, really cool pizza joints that's brewed right there. Great coffee, great beers. Um, and then of course we've got some nice patio work we have to, to do. They left behind some furniture that's all broken. A nice rug for some reason. Uh, that's now, it rained, it's soaked. We have to wait a whole nother day to move it because the strength of all the men we have here and all the women we have here couldn't move it. So. Uh, we will uh, be getting that cleaned up soon. And we expect, you know, out here, a ton of nice seating. We're gonna have, you know, the speakers out here playing. It's gonna be a really, really nice place to chill out when you're not playing the games. And of course, we're gonna try to figure out some way to bring the games out here. We don't have a great proposal yet. Um, and we might end up with some of the, the more hokey bar games, the giant Jingas and stuff. Uh, but, you know, maybe we're gonna come up with something even cooler. And yeah, we've got a Kermit right there. Uh, he will not be making it, unfortunately. It's a pretty cool mural, but it's not old, so don't, it hasn't been here very long, so please no one write me and say that it has any historical value. It was just recently done, and it doesn't exactly fit what we're doing. Where it says backstage up there, I imagine we'll have it saying free play by the time we open. This is just the first patio, and if you've been to any free plays, you know, Arlington has two pretty sizable patios. Uh, Denton has no patios and, and is relatively small, and Richardson is in the middle of a, a shopping center that has no patios. So um, we're really excited to have all this extra space to play with and try to figure out how to take that award-winning beer product outside. All right, guys, so that was the lower patio. We're gonna head up to the rooftop patio, kind of. It's been called already before we got here, the best rooftop patio in all of Tarrant County. Uh, and our goal is to make it, you know, the best in DFW. So let's go check it out. And as we walk, guys, you're gonna see the glorious stairs up to the rooftop patio. You'll also see some kind of weird stuff stored under the stairs. Another thing, we're not really sure what the previous tenant was thinking, um, but this is how it was when we found it, and we don't know why. It, kind of random furniture, random booth. So now run plywood, uh, it's, it's bizarre. But that's what happens when these places start to go out of business, and we find all sorts of weird stuff as we, uh, we go into sites. So here we go, up the long staircase. Next stop, rooftop patio. All right, guys, we're coming up to the rooftop patio. You're gonna see that it is not at all ready to open. Uh, we've got some standing water. This is actually standing water on the decking. Uh, we need to work on our drainage right here. And uh, it's supposed to be able to drain below it, hit the roof below it. We actually had some work that had to be done here to re-level it before we got here. This is actually the landlord has not quite finished up, uh, but we are, it's kind of a construction scene. You can see the bags remaining from you know, bags or cornhole or whatever you call that game. So they had this nice little lane that they were using. Still not sure what we're gonna do with it, but we know we're gonna do something amazing because look at this view. 
You can see downtown Fort Worth straight ahead. And when it's a nice day, this is the place to be. We've got these beautiful, huge trees near us and you're overlooking near South side. And then I wanna show you all kind of back here. So this is the rooftop patio. They just did a ton of repair, but you know what? When I go and look at sites and you can see this fence doesn't really work. When I go on sites, I wanna see the, the interesting stuff. So we've got a ton of HVAC here. That's another great thing about the performing arts venues. They have to have a ton of HVAC. You can see both 20 ton units. You can see this awesome exhaust fan from our kitchen. And then right behind the camera, the AC4. Yes, the rooftop bar. We're gonna go try to get in there so we can have it open when it's hot outside. I mean, it seems silly because I know other people have rooftop bars, but I've never had this opportunity. And it looks terrible right now, but it won't for long. Um, and so we're doing things right now, like going through all this for interesting, whether or not we can preserve or restore anything. There used to be a TV behind there. There might still be. So they had kind of a cover over the TV, some sort of receiver. And then let's see if I have the keys to get into this rooftop bar. Well, not too bad. We still have some stuff working on here. We still have a POS uh, and a lot of draft lines, which they've got these coming up the wall and up the roof uh, right here. We're gonna do something to preserve this somehow. Now, uh, what I know about things, and I bet this is cold, look at that. You can see the condensation. It's, if we pour that, some of those kegs would probably pour cold. They would be stale, they'd be terrible. I don't recommend it, but um, you can really see that they were trying something pretty uh, aggressive, having like 16 taps up here on the rooftop patio. We'll probably have more like five, six, uh, maybe up to 10 with a specialized beer line up there just for the, the rooftop patio. Um, but overall, you can see what they were doing. You can see, uh, the remnants of a three compartment sink, some cigarettes for some reason. It's uh, definitely illegal to smoke in this exact area. Uh, jockey box, hand washing. So this was, I mean, professionally done. It's just really, really dirty. Uh, what we're walking on right now is some new board that they had just recently installed when they had to re-level this entire uh, bar because when we walked through originally, the bar not doing so good, kind of sinking down. So if you see a bunch of construction debris, that's what that is. Uh, but man, when this place is done, it's going to be so cool. And, and the, the nice thing about having a rooftop bar that is not uh, accessible from the inside, but from the outside is you can come here just to drink our delicious beer products rather than necessarily have to pay that $10 to go into the arcade, which sometimes you want to stop by just for one of our awesome beers. Now you're going to be able to do that. And we're really excited to be able to offer that. All right, guys, I've been told and I haven't seen it that there is a homeless person living in this bathroom. We're going to go check that out. Why? I guess I don't have the key yet. Back to you soon. Harrison, just we're checking on it. All right, guys. So I talked earlier, um, kind of joking uh, that we thought that there was a homeless man living upstairs in the restaurant. It turns out we just actually, it, he, there is someone living there. So we, we just had a conversation, just kind of said that, you know, we're starting work and everything. Uh, we'd previously left a note and, you know, it, it's really like, it, really actually hurts. I hope we get to meet him. We were kind of talking to the door because it turned out he was actually inside and it was kind of a, a scary for probably up both, both sides. Um, so that was really interesting, but it's one of those things that, that's come up uh, when you're kind of resurrecting these, these old places. So hopefully uh, everything works out both for him and uh, Fort Worth does have a lot of resources uh, for the homeless. So it's, it's kind of like, a, it's very awkward for us and we definitely don't want to be like the, the jerks who are are kicking him out, but we are starting work here. So it was uh, kind of a, a weird situation, but uh, interesting. All right, guys, Corey Head from Free Play signing off. We just walked through all of Free Play Fort Worth, or at least what will become Free Play Fort Worth. Uh, we had an unexpected adventure. We saw a lot of weird, interesting things that used to exist on this building. Uh, it's been a uh, kind of an adventure. So uh, for now, we're signing off, but don't worry, Free Play is coming.